gentlemen, welcome to the Source Material Comics Podcast. And we are starting a new trilogy with the man, the myth, the legend, the patriarch, Mark Radlich. You probably listened to us in the past talk. We're our- sorry. <laughs> we had we had a trilogy of books that we looked at. It was a thematic through string where all they right. were all like gritty crime noir comics. Well, this time, Mark Radlich and I are going to be talking about some comics that are intertwined with one of our favorite passions, and that's metal music. These these are frequent out there. You you can usually find when I say frequent, but I mean it's not hard to find a comic based off of some type of metal property. Plenty of those out there. I remember definitely in the nineties uh, seeing quite a few. They're all uh, by Kiss. Yeah, <laughs> right. So this right here, what we're getting into here, we're going to look at Iron Maiden, uh, Legacy of the Beast. Next podcast you're going to listen to with featuring me and Mark is going to be Slayer Repentless, and then after that is our we are going to close things up we're going to close this shop up with guar orgasmageddon and which yeah i can't wait to talk about that first off because i was so ignorant about guar going into that comic but we'll talk about that later on down the road but today it's legacy of the beast iron maiden legacy of the beast okay what's funny is is that you picked three bands that i've listened to very little of i know you and i have talked about iron maiden in the past i even hopped on that last album review we i think we were i was part of the metal hammer of doom at that point where we talked about senjitsu i can't remember the name of that album now yeah, for some Sen- reason. yeah and it's actually one of our more popular metal hammer of dooms before uh before the whole thing went tits up well, Iron Maiden's a popular band, so it's it's that's been a staple. A lot of people hang their hats on loving Iron Maiden, and it's they've been a metal staple for decades. I mean, uh, Iron Iron Maiden, you know, came over see, after you have like Black Sabbath in that like first like early caveman stage of heavy metal. Iron Maiden comes in right after that, and right. they remain like one of the pillars of heavy metal for decades. Yeah, it's just a boat I never got on. I was listening to Metallica. Uh, I mean, who wasn't? But I was listening to Metallica. I was listening to Megadeth. I was really into the, you know, what the thrash theme scene was. And, th- and granted, I didn't dip my toe into metal until probably the early 90s. But I, yeah, so Iron Maiden was one of those ones that kind of just passed me by. I didn't have any exposure to it. I've seen the Columbia House ads for probably the albums, but I never picked them up. And none of my friends were listening to Iron Maiden either. I was probably the only metalhead of the, the core friends that we had back then. But if I so, remember correctly, like you were not necessarily into like the power metal either. No, no, I was not. Right, I and was, like, that's Iron Maiden for you. You could probably find a good smattering of comics that take a uh, at least a music property and adapt something to it. I, I will also say that there aren't too many metal bands that have a mobile game based on them. And that is what this is based on. This is based on a mobile game. Really? Yes, that I did this, not know. I watched some gameplay of this. On YouTube, so like the video it's game came out first, and then they made the comic off the game. Yes, yeah, this is wow, co- this is strictly based off of the 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 characters that you see in here are all in that game. Um, so this came out, the comic came out November first, two thousand seventeen. Our publisher is Heavy Metal Comics, which that's been a name that's been around for a while. Written by Ian Edgington and Lexi Leon. Artist uh, is Kevin West. To kind of paint a picture here. And I, do, I did an issue by issue breakdown. I'll, I'll just I'll throw that out here all at once here in a second. But so everybody that we see in this comic is part of the game. Now, I'm, mad, I, I'm trying to do my best to kind of explain to you how this game is set up. It's kind of like uh, it sets it up just kind of like at the beginning where Wait, can um, I tell you, like, now that you've said that, like everything is just fucking clicking for me. <laughs> right. It's uh, there's boss levels. Right. That are happening. Right. Because right. I'm reading this and I'm just like, wow, this is like a th- this guy wrote this comic like it's a video game. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, I, and I was so funny because I was like prepared to tear into it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that was the fucking assignment. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah. Right. Com- plugs. Com- okay. Completely based off of this game. You got to think about how tough that is to be like, okay, I've got Eddie and we've got to make a video game off of Eddie. Well, what are we going to do? So this is the plot they came, kind of came up with, which is kind of, uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> I was gonna it's say, out there. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, we have Eddie. What do we do with him? I don't know. Something along the lines of Streets of Rage meets Dante's Inferno. <laughs> right. Okay, run with it. <laughs> that is exactly what happens. 
they essentially give Eddie uh, a mission. He's been chained up to this tree forever and a day. And this, the clairvoyant, I think is her name. She shows up, takes Eddie off there. And it's like, okay, look, you are the, in, the indomitable embodiment of human will. Okay, so, and like, it, so you and your kids play video games. You know what she is, right? She's the fucking NPC that follows you around. Be like, you need to go here to get your health. You need to go here to get this. Uh, you know, you need to go here on this fetch quest. You need to go yep. this. You need to do this. That's what, she's the Microsoft paperclip of this fucking comic. Dude, that's exactly what she is in the game. She why, <laughs> She's the one that brings you off of there. And she's with you from the very beginning, and she's telling you, okay, in order to get experience, you could do this. Okay, now we can take this person, and we can do that. And then she helps fight along way now in the comic she doesn't really help fight until the very end but during the actual video the, game she makes the noble sacrifice <laughs> right <laughs> so yeah each each uh, level in the comic you're building your way up to the boss fight and that very first boss is the very first boss we fight uh, we see in this comic that that uh, that he pretty much kills pretty quickly but ripping out the heart of what it is but let me go ahead let me do the synopsis first and All then right. we'll get into some of the things some of my notes here and your notes so like i said lexi leon with the story in edgington with the script kevin west on pencils jason gorder on inks raul manriquez and emmanuel ordaz on colors and jacob basquel on letters so in issue one we meet the clairvoyant who rescues eddie being chained to a tree she explains that eddie is the embodiment of free will the unseen catalyst present during many turning points in history. However, the Beast, humanity's greatest adversary, has shattered Eddie's soul into pieces, using it to fuel his own servants. Now she looks to guide Eddie to reclaim the shards of his spirit and defeat the Beast and those that serve him. By the end of the issue, Eddie has faced and defeated the Wicker Giant, that's its name, the Wicker Giant, reclaiming a piece of his soul in the process. Now in the second issue, Eddie finds himself in ancient Egypt with aid from the goddess Aset, a set, maybe a set to confront her corrupted son, Horus. Eddie uses a newfound power to turn some of Horus's army against itself, which, yes, that happens in the game. That's a core mechanic. You can take the enemies and put them on your own side at some point. Uh, when Horus arrives, Eddie is able to defeat him by stabbing him in the eye and acquiring the soul shard, gaining more power in the process. The next issue finds Eddie battling another army led by an Axis general who aims to take Eddie out before he can reach the beast. Eddie gets captured but secures help from enemies of the Axis general who attack, giving Eddie the chance to escape. The general turns into a massive monster, but Eddie is able to best him, finally grabbing the general's soul shard and ending the fight. Next is the final stop, the underworld, to throw down with the beast. Oh, that's the throw down at the hoe down. And that's right, buddy. The underworld is fast, and after some time, they are able to track their quarry down. Tangling with Wrath and Beelzebub, they finally make it to the river of souls emptying into the depths of despair where the beast awaits. A climactic confrontation ensues where the beast has the upper hand and Eddie seems to be down for the count until Eddie is able to grab his trusty axe and chop the beast's arms off and soon after his head. As yeah. it appears, yeah, as and nothing more metal than that. As it appears, victory is won, an evil entity called the Unmaker manifest picking up where the beast left off. Realizing the dire nature of this new threat, the clairvoyant sacrifices herself. It lets loose a blast that appears to kill it, sending its vast energies through multiple portals. However, we learn that the Unmaker has planned every step of this out in order to poison all of space and time with the negative energy from the beast, unleashing hell upon her, the earth. As the clairvoyant dies, Eddie is sucked into a portal where a man calling himself the Alchemist. I wonder if that's the name of it. Iron Maiden song, The Alchemist. I will look it up for you. Oh, we need to look that up. The Alchemist is waiting for him, telling Eddie he will help him defeat the Unmaker. So yeah, we, we thought we got to the end, but we need a sequel, folks. We need a bigger boss than the Beast. We got the Unmaker we got to deal with. The Alchemist. Right. That is, in fact, an Iron Maiden song. Is it seriously? It is. Wow. Well, hey, listen, if you think Iron it's Maiden's from getting the 2010, the Final Frontier album. Okay, folks, if you think Iron Maiden's getting their shit in here, wait till we get to Slayer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tune in next time. All right, so there you go, Mark. That's our big, uh, you know, that's that's our four-issue story right there. All right, Mark, tell me what you thought of the comic, man. I know we kind of talked a little bit about it at the beginning. You you obviously now got a new a new lens to look at this through, considering it was... Perspective. There you go. What What are your thoughts? It was a very enjoyable adventure tale with essentially fucking Groot as your hero because Eddie doesn't talk. 
Eddie does not. No. Eddie is like a force of nature. The, the weird thing about Legacy of the Beast would be like they would he'd be written as vulnerable. So there would be some tension. You know, he's not like fucking Black Adam. Yeah, it's just like tearing through everything. Nothing can stop him. And there's no right. tension whatsoever. Remember that? Remember when we talked about Black Adam and, oh, yeah. you know, thought about just walking into the street? <laughs> you know, so like the first few pages or the first first few you know moments of an encounter with any boss or whatever, any bad guy. He's having a rough go of it. And then for no reason whatsoever, it's almost like the Hulk. Eddie just like, I've had, I've had all, he's like Popeye. I've had all I can stand and I can't stand no more. And then suddenly he beats the thing. Like, yep. and, and every time it was, he just took out their, their Duracell battery. Like oh, yeah. whatever that, that like pink crystal thing or red crystal thing. Like every single one of them had this vulnerability to them. And it's like, it was never protected. There was never like plate armor across it. You know, it was never like hidden underneath a tuft of hair. It was always just out there. Like a penis, right. like a dog penis, just just red, red oh, no. dog penis, yeah. just sticking out for this the is world the thing. to see. Rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, if I had a nickel for every time someone wagged their penis at me, um, listen to me. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that these enemies that Eddie is like, they just they just have that thing out there, and he's just like snatches it, right? Yep. And he's done. Dead. He's won. Yeah. And this happens three or four times. <laughs> Right. Over the course of the story. And then at the end, see, the end to me was a little convoluted because it was like, oh, was, was it he ever? Was, he was fighting the enemy, but the enemy wasn't really the enemy, but the enemy was tricking him. And the CIA knew that the FBI was setting up the DEA. And then mm. the clairvoyance is like, fuck it, because we can't have male heroes heroing. I'll just sacrifice myself and solve everything because I'm the key to anything. Mm-hmm. And and so the woman, the clairvoyant, just takes care of business, sacrifices herself, and is and he's just like, I'm I'm the mascot for Iron Maiden. That's it. That's the whole story. <laughs> oh, three stars. Just, three stars on Goodreads, Jesse. Yeah, this was okay. So yes, of, it was just the, okay. That, well, yeah, that's exactly what I was just going to say. This was very meh to me. I mean, this was they could have done a lot worse. We see a lot worse uh, later on down the line. We'll talk about that here in a few, but. Uh, you know, this was uh, okay. I've got to take somebody uh, that, that, you know, an iconic image and I got to build a story around it. Okay. He looks like a zombie. Why does he look like a zombie? Well, they really don't get into that, but it, it's interesting that they're like, okay, this thing is like the, this embodiment of the human spirit. And I thought, well, wow, that's okay. All right. I can see, I can see like elements of Iron Maidens. The embodiment of the human spirit is a mute brute. <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> that, that is an interesting take on the human spirit. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot. I think there's a lot to be said about why they chose that. The um, human spirit is a weapon of choice. So, my, yeah, my notes here. Uh, yeah, you already talked about Eddie, of course, does not speak. He just grunts, snarls and laughs. That's yep. all Eddie he, does. He, I am Groot throughout the whole book. <laughs> One at one point he's on the moon, and it's pretty funny because they kind of start this issue out. He's on the moon with the clairvoyant, and he's playing a guitar in yep. which he then creates his own image. And the clairvoyant actually has to like explain, "Hey, just by the way, I know this doesn't the physics don't work like this, but I'm making it happen." I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I guess that's pretty metal. So here, uh, here's what I'm going to tell you because I, in like I, I think it was either Black Adam or something else where we, you know there, we talked about comics. There same kind of conversation I've had with Alexis about television shows like some stuff it's just okay to consume but there's not much to talk about and Mm -hmm. and you and i go into these things blind like you and i talked in the past just because of our years of doing the metal hammer of doom together hey why don't we do some metal related comics also we keep saying like let's do some stuff on here that isn't marvel and dc superhero shit let's you know there's so many different kinds of comic books out there let's use this platform to kind of explore a little bit of that so we put together, I happen to have the Legacy of the Beast book on my shelf, and then, you know, we, we found two more that were easy to come by, and that was that. Hmm. And what I'm saying is, like, we didn't know how good or bad it was going to be. It, it, Like I said, it's it was a fun read, you know, and, and you could see that the, the writing team on this was having fun with it, with lines yeah. like that. You right. know, breaking the fourth wall, you know, it's like, it's not Deadpool or anything like that, but, you know, the occasional wink and nod to the reader, it's fun. The problem is, like, this is one of those really shallow uh, adventure comics mm-hmm. to to where after kind of giving your opinion, there's not much else to talk about. No, no, was, I'm not. This isn't a heady experience where I'm like, oh, my goodness, no, can you no, believe this isn't, <laughs> this isn't fucking kingdom come? Right. <laughs> this is a this is a, a team that made a game and they were like, OK, well, hey, we just told a story. 
and we're going to I told a story through the game. Now we're going to kind of adapt that story and maybe give you a little bit a little bit more in the comic. You know what um, kills me is I remember back in um, video game week. Remember, you know, we were reviewing Ready Player One, so everything had to be about video games because I used to fucking take this shit seriously. <laughs> so remember, we reviewed Injustice, right? Oh yeah, oh, Injustice yeah. was essentially a Mortal Kombat game with DC superhero and villains. Yeah, that's right. And they had to construct a whole cockamamie story yeah. out of the ether to give you a reason to play this game and have these characters fighting each other. And they had to invent a reason out of whole cloth for why Catwoman could stand up in a fight against Superman. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> right. And not be punched to the moon. If you'll go back and listen to that podcast, like there's a really great example of oh, yeah. just because you're making a video game and then a comic from said video game doesn't mean it has to be flat and shallow and lacking in any kind of you know deep thematic meaning. Injustice was awesome. Yeah, like there was that whole that there was that whole debate over, you know, should Superman have killed Joker or not? And we talked about like mental health. Like you and I were all over the place on that Injustice comic. Nothing like that. There's nothing like that here in Legacy of the Beast. No, it, yeah, and Tom Taylor's the one that did in just the Injustice comic, mm-hmm. and he's he's rat he's gone places. He's currently, or at least he was on DC's Deceased, which was mm-hmm. a really. A, I read, I think, the first story of that, and it's really good. You're right. Tom Taylor knows how to weave a tale about a video game and make it matter. Right. This right here is just like, okay, we've got the video game. Let's just tell the story, uh, take yep. elements from the video game, throw it in here, and, and let's see how it gets. Fine. That's yeah. fine. You know, because again, most, I, first of all, that Venn diagram of like metalheads and comic book readers, and, you know, that, that space in the middle <laughs> of comic book readers who are also metalheads and would buy a prestige format comic book about Iron Maiden. Boy, are they not looking <laughs> for heady, <laughs> deep fucking themes here. <laughs> I'm sure they were pleased as punch to right. watch, to, to read five issues of Eddie just fighting goons. And it's, it gets brutal too, which is great. I like to see some of the stuff that Eddie does to some of these. It's... When, he, oh, when he, before he rips the penis off. <laughs> Yeah, rips that red penis right out of there. No, it does. He's like he's throwing axes into people's foreheads. Yeah. I mean, it does get pretty violent, and which I'm fine with. I'm, but I and I'm assume anybody who's an Iron Maiden fan probably is not going to have too much of a problem with it either. It's simple, and there's nothing inherently wrong with simple. Well, let me ask you a question then. So, if you were a, a let's say you were an Iron Maiden fan, saw this Iron Maiden comic on the rack. I did. I grabbed it, bought it. <laughs> and then realized <laughs> that is what happened. <laughs> okay. All right. And then realized this is based on a video game. Would you be more inclined to maybe give the video game a try? I had two or three people last night tell me that I should play Hogwarts Legacy. Okay. Oh, oh boy. We had people over last night for booze and games and various sundries. And <laughs> sundries. <laughs> and two or three of these motherfuckers were like, you should totally play Hogwarts Legacy. I'm like, people, I have shit to do. I have a job. I have a job. I have <laughs> children. I'm social. I have a hobby that takes up more time than it should. This probably didn't sway you one way or the other, did it? No, not, not even a little. All right. That's fair. All right. The only other couple notes that I had here and we get out of here. Um, and in, in regards to the art, when they made their way down to the underworld, there was some pretty unsettling like torture because they got to kind of get that across i thought that they did a fine job on the art because they step onto like the ground and it's nothing but people piled in on one another uh that the uh, that eddie and eddie and the clairvoyant are like walking on their faces and stuff it made me claustrophobic so props to the artists and the uh, the people that came up with this uh storytellers they did a good job there uh when it came to getting that across that's my only other note uh, I enjoyed the art. I, I thought this was a very pretty comic. I guess my frustration a little bit is with the uh, publishing that they went with prestige format. You know, they really nice pages, but binding and everything like it looks like a collector's item comic. It's bound really nicely. Like I said, it's got you know, good thick pages and everything. Like it's a good looking book. I'm not entirely sure the content lived up to the presentation, but you know, it's one of those where I think like if you don't really collect a lot of comics. But you're a big metalhead, and you see that, and you have your your your, your girlfriend. Think of it, think of it like this, Jesse. Okay, Jesse, I'm thinking. Take my hand. All right. <laughs> Walk with me. Walk with me. Your girl, your your wife. She takes you to the bookstore because she wants to buy what all women read, and it's the only thing they read: smutty books. Oh, good. Okay. They could be romantically smutty, or they could be straight up chips, dips, chains, and whips smutty. Oh, boy. Um, there is a lot of in between. You know. Uh, you know, vampires, molesting white women, that kind of a thing. Um, it's all there. But they, but she took you into the bookstore 
to buy smutty books because that's all women read, as we know. <laughs> and you're like, if I have to look at another smutty book, I'm going to rip my own red penis off. <laughs> <laughs> so you so she was like, go get a Starbucks. I'll be with you momentarily. And you're okay. like, thank fucking God. Let you with me, me get so far? the hell out of here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been there. And as you're walking to the Starbucks to think about your life choices, you, you happen to see the, the two or three shelves of trade paperbacks. Okay. And you're like, huh. I remember when I was a man once. I was. That, um, and I remember liking comic books. Let me go see what's here. Let's see what's new in the world of comics. And you're flipping and you're flipping. You're like, holy shit, I, an Iron Maiden book? I like Iron Maiden. And you're flipping through. I'm like, this is pretty cool. You know what? In addition to the smutty books that my wife is going to buy, I'm going to buy this too. Well, at the time that you read it, you're not let down that you bought it. No, you got not it. at all. You got it. You, you got it. It's something that entertains you for a little bit. And you got to kind of read about an adventure of the Iron Maiden mascot, Eddie. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Let's get the hell out of here. That was Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast. Mark Radlich, why don't you tell everybody about Where it is from? Yes. Actually, show it right now. Um, tell everybody what's going on on the network here May 15th. If you are paying attention and you are listening to this contemporaneously when it's supposed to come out, Assuming I go see Halloween and Hammerfall on <laughs> tomorrow, tonight we'll be doing a triple feature. Tetris, Boston Strangler, and Bruiser. They're all uh, movies on Hulu. I no, Tetris is Apple. But me and Robert Winfrey, in lieu of doing a damn you Hollywood, we're going to do a triple feature of streaming movies that have come out over the past few months. And then um, I, I may or may not be going to Hammerfall and Halloween on the 16th, and I may or may not be going to see The Bouncing Souls on the 17th, but you know what I will be doing on the 18th, Jesse? Tell me. Hanging in the treme. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Watching people sashay. Oh, goodness. While we proceed from the corner to the deuce. Ah, that's so right. It'll be Thursday, the 18th of May, in the year of our Lord, 2023. Yep. So I did put this on the calendar then. Yeah, you Look did. Look at me go. Ooh, yep. Boy. And the next one and the one after that, it looks like. Look at me. I'm a scheduling machine. Yeah. Yeah, folks. Check out the Source Material Comics podcast. We've got shows like this one here. Hopefully that didn't turn you off too much. But uh, you can check out our previous discussions where Mark and I had a trilogy talking, uh, like Mark said, three kind of crime noir books. We had Bad Weekend, Slots, and the fourth man so check those out you can also check out my 90 centric comic podcast that we do on here called the unspoken issues podcast where it's myself and some guys that are associated with the unspoken decade.com get together and talk about 90s comics you should be able to hear one in regards to gi joe extreme do you know much about that property you'd probably know a lot about gi joe but do you know about gi joe extreme well if you haven't you should be able to find that in the archive let's get out of here mark radlich has left the building to go use the restroom. I'm Jesse Starcher. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. All of this would not be possible without W2Mnet.com, so make sure to seek them out for more podcasts. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please feel free to share, and we look forward to entertaining you again soon. This is where Jesse says, Mark, shut the fuck up. <laughs> to confront her corrupted son, Horace. Eddie uses a new... Hello, <laughs> Hello Horace. <laughs> Hello. Evil entity called the Unmaker manifests. Yeah. <laughs> Closely related to the Unprettier. <laughs> distant relative to the Undertaker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Clairvoyant sacrifices herself and lets loose a blast and appears to kill it, sending its vast energies through multiple Dude, portals. I let loose a blast during no. a silent disco. Yeah. <laughs> A silent disco is instead of like a DJ playing music into a room, it is set through headphones and everyone gets a set of headphones and you can switch channels to change the music. And everyone so, kind of just dances to their own track. You, you're going to have to get back to the story in regards to your blast because somebody had their headphones off and I guarantee they heard it. But Well, they, they definitely smelled it, I'll tell you that much. Oh, no. My, my wife gave me a look like and I was just like, I cannot tell a lie. No. Contact you your local Royal Caribbean Cruise Line attendant today to make your vacation plans. Not a sponsor. First of all, have you ever been on a cruise? No, you've never left Ohio. No, I have um, not. I went on a walk once. <laughs> However, we learned that the Undertaker, no, the Unmaker, 
has planned every step <laughs> on yes. the final frontier there's a track called when the wild wind blows that's also what i did at the silent disco come for the come for the comic review stay for the park jokes. yes <laughs> what Not it, nutmeg fantasy. i have no idea what you're talking about can't you see okay Jesse yeah, clearly a song. Me in your nutty nutmeg fantasy <laughs> I don't want any. I don't want any <laughs> lyrics where me and you are involved in something to do with a nut. After we have recorded and you're editing, do you just find yourself going, "I hate him, I hate him, I hate him" <laughs> the whole time? Of course not, Mark. Why would I? <laughs> oh my God, you motherfucker! Unbelievable! I can't. He can't do it, folks. 